Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This is not a lesson in geography, but rather <laughs> the states that are pivotal to the presidential election results. As Trump and Harris remain neck and neck on Election Day, more than 83 million ballots have already been cast during weeks of early voting, but millions are still heading to the polls today. Isaac Hale is a professor of political science at Occidental College, and he's joining us now live to explain the impact of the results uh, of the results as we head into Election Night. It's a big day. Welcome. Thanks for coming in for us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about these battleground states a little bit. They have seen record turnout when it comes to early voting, um, and especially Republicans, which has kind of shifted a little bit, especially when it comes to like North Carolina. Um, does this give us any hint of which way the battleground states could go? I would strongly encourage us not to read too heavily into the early vote. So in 2020, we saw uh, President Trump and his team strongly discouraging their voters from relying on early vote and absentee voting. This year we've seen a change in campaign strategy with the campaign really encouraging Republican voters to get out there and vote. So one possible interpretation is a surge in Republican enthusiasm. The other interpretation is that the election day vote is being cannibalized. And so we really just won't know until we see the results come in. Uh, whether this early vote total means anything. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of the problem with some of these polls we're yeah. seeing is like you can really interpret them on, in so many different ways. Yes, and I think the early vote is particularly dangerous to read the tea leaves on. Okay, <laughs> well let's talk about um, some of the recent elections when it comes to the blue wall. You've got Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. They've all voted pretty much the same way in the past, but it's not clear what pattern will hold this year. What are, you, what are you thinking? Well, I think this is reflective of just a really close election. The polls in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania all show the race less than a point. So if the polls are dead on and it is actually that close, you could see a split just because one state goes half a point towards one and one state goes half a point towards the other. And that's not necessarily indicative of some seismic shift in the region. It would just be reflective of the race being really close. But it's also important to know that in 2020 and 2022, there were some systematic you know, deviations in the polls from what we expected. So it would certainly not be unexpected for one candidate to sweep all of those states by several points or the other to sweep all of those states by several points. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. Like the polls were completely <laughs> worthless in 2016. <laughs> Basically, if we're being honest about it, um, race in, in this race uh, has been a major factor. I know you've done research on race and how that affects turnout and, and voting and elections before. Um, going back to the battleground states, especially given that Donald Trump is gaining in the black and Latino men category, how is race playing into this uh, yeah. election? That's a phenomenal question. So we saw, starting in 2016, real educational polarization among white voters in the country. So increasingly, we saw non-college white voters sorting into the Republican Party, white voters with a college degree sorting into the Democratic Party. We haven't seen as much movement among voters of color, but early polls for 2024 have suggested maybe that there is some movement occurring among voters of color this election, too, maybe increased Republican vote share. Harris is still winning, winning those groups handily, but maybe some movement there and an increased movement of white voters with a college degree into the Democratic Party. And so there are multiple ways to interpret what's going on. But one thing that's worth noting is that in prior elections, uh, African-American and Latino voters um, who are conservative have voted for Democrats at unusually low rates. Mm -hmm. And what we see this time happening isn't that, you know, liberal African-Americans, liberal Latino voters are suddenly becoming Republicans. It's conservatives who for in past elections sat may have voted out. Democrat or may have sat it out coming out and deciding to vote Republican this time around. Is, is your job just like so fun or is it so frustrating right now that, <laughs> that you can look at all these things and it's like this pot is this way, there's a gender gap and the race issue and all these things. Um, one of the things that's been pretty consistent over the last 20 years is that the Republican president, even if they've been elected president, they have not won the popular vote. Do we see this changing or, you know, I mean, the Electoral College is something that people, we start talking about every four years and then don't really talk about how that popular vote works into it. Absolutely. So it's worth noting that in the past 35 years, Republicans have won the popular vote once, and that's in 2004 in George W. Bush's reelection. But of course, the Republican Party has won the presidential election three times in that period. George W. Bush's popular vote win in 2004, but also Electoral College popular vote splits in both 2000 and 2016. And so it is certainly the case that we've seen that Republic, the Republican Party has an advantage in the Electoral College compared to their popular vote share. Now, an average of the polls shows Kamala Harris up about a point or two 
And if that's the case, if Joe Biden had won the popular vote by a point or two, instead of the four and a half points he actually won by, mm. he would have probably lost in the Electoral College. Now, because of the shifting party coalitions, it's possible that Harris could win in the Electoral College, even while winning the national popular vote by only a point or two. But it is certainly the case that the Electoral College continues to have an outsized impact on who wins. We don't have a national popular vote for president, so it would not be unheard of, certainly considering what we saw in 2016, for another Trump victory while losing the national popular vote. My head is spinning. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Professor Isaac Hill, thank you so much. We hope to see you again. Maybe you can break it down for us uh, after the fact. Thank you for having me.